Oh, and there's my other one. Perfect. Oh, Tyler, that is awesome. We are good to go. Oh, I do have a funny story, something to tell you. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Something I did? Okay. All right. Here we are. Another Wacky Wednesday. Just waiting for all those peeps to sign in on either Facebook or YouTube and we'll get started for another Wednesday. Yeah, just give everybody a few minutes to say hello and come on board. It's so exciting to be back. So today is Wednesday, July 27th, our last Wednesday of the month. And it is so exciting. Another simple sewing, summer sewing with Sandy. Oh, there's my peeps are signing in. Thanks. Hi, Teresa S. Hi, Hans S. So good. So anyways, here we are live this time. Hi, Tina. We're live and uh, not recorded. This is actually the live living version. So this is awesome. And yes, it is the last Wednesday of July. I'm hoping everybody's enjoying some of the beautiful summer weather we have out there. It is fantastic, as long as you don't mind melting in the heat. Um, of course, we're very lucky here at my sewing room because we've got air conditioning. So if you want to stop by and visit us, you can have a, a little while to cool off in the store. So yes, here we are for Wacky Wednesday at my sewing room and I'm Sandy. And thank you very much everyone who tunes in because you guys like us and you give us comments and you share. And that is fabulous because people out there are so wonderful anyway so this is week four of our simple summer sewing so i just want to thank everybody who tuned in for weeks two and three when i wasn't here and i have a few people that i'd like to do a special shout out to as we get started all right saying hi to mary ellen m hi rose l tina b and s and Teresa s uh, also a shout out to Denise B, Sandy A, Carol G, my Judy Van O, Patty B, and Patty B is one of our teachers at, at the store and thank you very much for, for tuning in for the zip bag. Patty makes beautiful bags as well. And she had a little tip for us to put that zipper in. The zipper could you could use the wash away wonder tape to hold the zipper down before you do your stitching rather than use a pin and poke yourself so anyways thank you patty for that and i'm going to talk about uh patty's class at the end of our show but she's doing a bag class coming up also a shout out to ann p-l Teresa w of course we have tina b already signed in loan f uh billy p our Teresa S is already on the screen as well. Carol D, uh, Maureen W, Rose L, uh, and Mom, if she's tuned in with us, Maureen W. I've got some new names. These ones, I think, came from um, YouTube, which is really sweet. Arlene H, Sue P. And then we had some people drop in and say hi to you this week and uh, talk about the show. Anna N and Chris L. So thank you guys. Uh, being such wonderful lawyer, loyal visitors, viewers, likers, share us. That's, you know, thank you so much. Without you, there is no show. So thanks very much. I also want to give a little thank because thank you too because uh, I have a great production crew. I call them my production crew. My technical staff, of course, you know, is Tyler. So he helps get it all up and running. And you'll notice today I managed to get both Facebook and YouTube going at the same time, which is a miracle. Uh, also, I have a lovely... Um, artist oh there she is i wonder if she'll stop by and say hi on camera 
Oh, she's waving to me, but she's not. She's my artistic in, uh, inspiration. She helps me pick out colors and thinks ideas for me. And that's our lovely Dawn up in the kidding room. And another one who helps advertise all of our stuff and get us going and who has some really marvelous ideas of how to do that. And that's Case and our social media director. So they, I want to thank all our product. It's like the Academy Awards. I'd like to thank this. I'd like to thank that. Anyways. Anyways, I like to thank you guys, especially for because you tune in and, and listen and watch and, and view it. Not Even if you're not here right now, you do it later and that's awesome. All right, so simple summer sewing this week. Week four is half and half apron. I'd like to take you back in time. Let's set the mood. Go back to the 50s when we dressed all fancy. We put our pearls on, our heels on. We did our hair and made ourselves beautiful for cocktail hour. You know, I like it shaken, not stirred. You could be a Bond person. But anyways, thank you for joining me for cocktail hour at my sewing room. And of course, what got us started on this was the cutest little pattern for an apron. And this is what they call the half and half apron. So it's half one color, half another color. And these colors, this particular set of colors was selected by Dawn and I think they're just awesome and when we thought about it that looks really 50-ish and it is adorable hi Kim J-H thank you for coming for cocktail hour so this is the fabric that she selected for me this one is called and I kept reading it wrong I thought it was cherry blossom but it's cheery blossom and we thought boy does that ever look like 50s retro aprons so we have a whole line of this fabric to select from it's called as I say cherry blossom it is a Robert Kaufman and it's $21.99 a meter so there's lots of other colors there's reds and mints and creams and, and lovely different ones that you can select to make your apron or you can go whatever kind of apron you want to do like you could make it seasonal like Christmas you can make it Thanksgiving Easter I had really wanted to see if I could find fabric that had cocktails on it because to me this is a little cocktail apron Woohoo! anyway so as it turned out I went with the cherry cherry blossom and the pattern we're using today, of course, is called the Half and Half Apron. And it is another one of the wonderful Quilt Company apron patterns. It's only a single page. It's $2.50. And we have lots of them. And we have lots of other things to, to do as well. So last week we had the magic of making an apron out of a tea towel. This time we're actually going to make an apron out of two fabrics that's why it's called a half and half so you get to select whatever two apron uh, prints you like so when you do this one uh, I gotta remember all my buttons from last week we have some essential tools that you need to do this apron of course we're going to need our cutting mat we're also going to need that big long ruler because we've got to cut some big lengths We've got our small ruler to cut to do a little measuring. Of course, you need your rotary cutter. Snips to do a little trimming. We've got our seam ripper and our awl. So you put the awl and put your awl and your seam ripper together. Uh, we need a marker. And in this case, because all of the markers marks we're doing are in the inside of the apron, because it's going, we're going to turn this like a burrito style and there won't be any seams on the outside at all so we need it I just used a plain ballpoint pen but you can use whatever fabric mark you'd like that will show up on the color of your pattern that your 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 fabric that you're using you're going to need some pins because we're going to measure and mark you need of course thread and of course this one I used polyester again 40 weight because those ties and things are going to get a tugging and they're going to go through the washer so you need it to be really strong no cotton this time 
Uh, also, we're going to use a couple of different feet. I have my quarter inch piecing foot as usual, but I also have my regular sewing foot, the reverse pattern feed number one. These are my Bernina feet. I know that everybody's got those equivalent in whatever brand you do use. And this is not Bernina specific. This is whatever machine makes a nice straight line or a decorative stitch. We're going to need our big ruler be, uh, measuring tape because sometimes I find that, I, you know, when you're doing a piece that's bigger than my board, which is only 17 by 23, I need my ruler, my measuring tape to cut it. And last but not least, we have the lovely Turn It All, uh, the original Bow Whip, because we are going to be turning those straps we've got. Hi, Sandy. Thanks for joining us. Okay, so those would be the tools we're going to need so i'm just going to slide that out because i need my board to work on so that you can see my fabrics and things really well oh i have to move my cocktail so that i can get sewing here all right so on top and i'm going to try very hard not to get my head in the road like i normally do and we have a big head thing but uh want to stop and just a uh, little joke for you uh, what did one knife say to the other? Look sharp. Woohoo! So we're going to be working with some sharp stuff, so we're going to look sharp. So I, I just grabbed a couple pieces of fabric. Um, this was a cute coffee one that I had at home, plus matching uh, dots. So what you're doing is a, a base of an apron, so you can pick out whatever print you like. Um, I liked the ones that had an all-over design. And then I picked out of that uh, a contrasting fabric. And in this case, it came from the same line. And what you're going to do is going to cut the body of the apron from one of the pieces. And you're going to cut the pocket as well. So when you get this one, you're going to cut a 14 inch by 30 inch, which is going to become the skirt of the apron. And you're going to cut an 8 inch by 16 inch pocket. Now... Of course, I say that and then I say, I did something different on another one. <laughs> Anyways, I picked out a uh, contrasting fabric. And for this one, we're going to make those straps that go around and tie at the back and an accent band. band. So just have a quick look again at this apron. So you can see that the uh, body is the the main cherry blossom I made the pocket the same color and then of course accented it with the other color um, the other thing that you can do and I did it on one of the other samples I'm going to show you is that you can make your pocket the same as your accent color and then it will stand out and you will be able to see it all right so as I said out of the main fabric that you use you're going to cut a 14 inch by 30 inch piece and that's why I borrowed my ruler because or my measuring tape because my board and stuff don't do that so I folded it in half of course and measured 15 inches and cut um, then of course you're cutting also an 8 inch by 16 so what I ended up doing was just trimming off the salvage and cutting my 8 inch strip and then using what was left for the body uh, Directional, be careful. My cherry blossom one wasn't, but the cups are, so you want to make sure your cups aren't all upside down. Out of your accent fabric, you're going to cut two four and a half inch width strips. That will make the apron tie and one nine inch by 30 inch accent band. And that goes at the bottom of the apron. That's your accent band. Okay, so that's what we do with our our fabric and you only need a half a yard of each uh, if you're going to change up that um, pocket and do it the same as your accent you're going to have to add uh, like eight inches uh, by 16 inches so an extra 0.2 of a meter so I would go with a 0.75 uh, three quarters of a yard rather than half if you're going to do the pocket in the accent all right so then once you've got all those pieces cut out ooh, does everybody remember this fabric a year ago my kids got married 
and I their theme was lemon squeeze so I made her a half and half apron out of the lemon fabric so of course I still had lemon fabric left over so here it is my lemon fabric I've cut it into a piece that was the 14 by 30 for the main body of the apron it asks us to find the center so I folded it in half and marked it with a pin so there's my center and that will be the top of my apron and then it asks us to take um, a half inch I'll show you close up they told you to just iron under a half inch on both sides that's going to be your hem on both sides of this apron so that is our main body piece then with our straps we cut those two four and a half inch strips we're going to just do like those quilters and we're going to put these two together on the 45 degrees so we're going to lay one right side up turn the other one wrong side right side down and then mark it pin it so they don't wiggle away and i mark this one and you can probably see that I have a line, 45 degree line cut, or, or sorry, marked. Then I'm just gonna sew on that 45 degrees. I'm gonna trim that uh, seam and I'm gonna press everybody open so he's going to be a nice, long, lean, four inch strip. This is going to be our apron. And once you've got that sewn together, it's ready for its last step. So you don't have to worry about doing anything else with it now your pocket fabric so you cut yourself a pocket fabric which is 18 inches by 16 you're going to fold it right sides together and you're going to put the fold at the top and so a quarter inch down the sides so you have got like a little envelope and then, of course, using Anne's trick, put your thumb up in the corner, bend that down, and pull it through. So you're going to have a nice little pocket on your apron. Woohoo! There it is. Give us a stitch. Or stitch. Give us an iron. Iron this up a little bit so it's nice and flat. Now, they asked us to find center. And this is the problem with doing this on TV with the matching pocket. You can't see it! Hi, Chris L. How are you? Anyway, so you can't really see it matching, but I have marked the center. From that center, they want you to move it two inches to your right. So there is two inches to the right from the center of my pin. And they say to put that pocket with the raw edges down match up the raw edges with the raw edges of the body of the apron and then you're just going to sew this just like we did before down from this corner to the bottom and this corner to the bottom and simple easy peasy right okay so that sews on these guys that we have folded under on this edge that half inch you just have to give it a seam i did a quarter inch seam all the way down on one of them and I'll show you that next I think it was a decorative stitch because it was spooky and I thought it would be kind of cool all right and don't forget we still have our accent ruffle so I'll show you what to do with that in just a second all right so all our raw edges are down we are actually going to turn this one so they're all three in a nice big long line and we're going to stitch it across that bottom now you're going to notice that this guy is now half an inch too long on those sides so once you get it sewn you're going to you're going to do something i'll show you the next piece okay so there we are this first apron is to the first cutting stage you've got your seams or organized okay i've switched fabrics and i switched fabrics so that you could see my pocket because on the other one you can't see the pocket so here is my body of the apron it's now very fun it's kind of a halloween one i've sewn my pocket in right there so it's raw edges at the bottom and i got to show you 
I did a decorative stitch down this side. You probably can't see it all that well, but it kind of looked like spooky spiders. And so I did a decorative stitch down that side to hold those edges. Okay, so there is our, our apron now to that point. Find center. And you're just going to stitch all the way across the bottom of your apron. Whoop, and stitch it down half your quarter inch. So when you unfold it, you've got one thing that looks like a big long line. You remember me talking to you about um, pillowcases that are burrito style where you laid them all out, sewed the top, then you rolled it from the bottom, tucked it under and sewed it again so that oh, I'll show you on the next piece. All right, so let's move this one out of the way because he's he's done as far as he can go so let's put it this way now this apron okay so here's the body of my apron and i've got my pocket this time it's a matching pocket and i've sewed my lovely seams up the side i've sewed this across the bottom and i've ironed it down the next thing you want to do is to iron that extra little piece down because you know it was half an inch longer. So now I've got that. It's going to be a nice folded edge on there. Now, this is the fun part. Before I roll my burrito, what I did was put two binding, or I shouldn't say binding, close up, two basting lines of stitches because we're going to have to gather this in a few minutes so i just put two really quick basting lines across there because we're going to use it in a minute all right for this now for burrito style you're going to roll the top of your apron just roll it roll it roll it like a big sausage roll 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 until you see the top edge of your decorative bottom of your uh, accent fabric then you're going to take this side of your accent fabric and you're just going to pin it all the way along. Okay, so now we've got this big long sausage. Woohoo! And you're actually going to stitch right along that line. Now this one was done with a quarter inch. I made this just a little bit wider, three eighths of an inch. And I just zoomed all the way along here like a big tube matching up my edges of the decorative red decorative fabrics all the way across and then lo and behold what you do is you reach in and you start pulling that out from inside Woo! and the next thing you know it's all the way out i'll show you my next one okay here we go so once you've got your burrito pillowcase sewn and you've pulled it apart it's going to look like this you're going to iron it all flat, but you'll see that there are no open seams at all. Because you have done a burrito, it's all inside, you don't have any seams. Then you're just going to finish this edge, match it up with the stitch that you did coming down from the top, and seal off the edges of your decorative fabric. So there is your first part of your apron and it is all complete and you can see the pockets all sewn in there's no open sides okay you're doing really great you're on the last step of the apron now i told you that we had um let's go back to this one for a second we had those lines of um by big stitches I basted right and all I did was I swished this up and made ruffle so what they're asking is to make this cross the top to be approximately 18 inches so it doesn't take much ruffling so what I did was find center and ruffled so that this side was about nine inches and then I ruffled this side which was about nine inches when I was done just have to pull them and make a little ruffle so it's all roughly roughly across the top then you take your band and lay it right side up find center so you fold it in half 
and pin it here that's where center is then I want you to measure nine inches and mark it so there's nine inches from that center to the right and then measure nine inches to your left and mark it so that is going to be where our ruffle is going to sit center and then nine inches of ruffle on either side so here's our little top all ruffled up and you're going to have to adjust a little bit because I may have ruffled it too much to all fit center is right here so we can pin that center to this then roughly it all out and pin this to this side okay okay that's nine inches this way now we're going nine inches this way so I just need to unruffle just a little so that it will match up to the nine inches on this side okay nine inches perfect all right and then you're just going to stitch that down you're going to match up those raw edges the best you can as you go with the with the ruffle and do a nice straight stitch all the way across make sure you back stitch both sides okay so that that is and just do the apron top size don't do any more okay so this is what it's going to look like once you've got it sewn on okay there it is i've got it sewn across here just a regular stitch. I'm not even going to take out the um, basting stitch that I used to do the gathering because it's going to sew inside. Now, what you'd like to do on this open end is to put the right sides together. We're going to form the strap. And I made a nice little 45 degree angle so I used this little ruler it's got a 45 degree angle on it uh, I moved it over to the point and I gave myself a quarter inch I drew a little dot right here so I know that that was my quarter inch inward right and a 45 so then I just drew a little line from the 45 to that dot and that's where I started sewing so then what I did was I sewed starting at the corner back stitched came all the way forward hit that little mark at the quarter inch turned and then keeping your two raw edges together you go zip 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 so all the way along until you reach the edge of your apron and that's kind of where you're going to stop. You're going to stop and back stitch right at that corner. So this is all now folded under. And they tell us that stitch should be a, um, a stretch stitch, kind of a zigzaggy stretch stitch, because this is going to get pulled a lot and they need to have a lot of tying. So here's where I made the quarter inch across here, trimmed it and went this way. <gasps> now we get to use my favorite tool this is of course the turn it all and we've been using this very frequently through all of these uh, simple sewing things tuck the white tube down all the way to the end at least this one's not as bad as the strap on the on the uh, tea towel apron tuck it in push it through boop, boop, boop. just keep going until you hit that open spot and then pull out the tube and turn it inside out okay so there's our first strap while you're there use that little poker tool to poke out those edges so you get that nice flat 45 degree okay here it is take that out and you're going to iron that nice and flat so now we have one part of our apron. Let's see if I do it from the front. You might see better. So there's one part of the apron with the things, with the strap all done with 45. You're going to do the same to the other side. Once you've got that down. Oh, we're getting close to the end now, everybody. It's getting close. Oh, we got to stop and have a joke then. All right. Why shouldn't you tell? Oh, here, let's go back why shouldn't you tell an egg a joke because it might crack up 
<laughs> All right. And how did the chef win the golf tournament? He got a hole in one with his waffle iron. Woo! Go guy. Cheers on that one. Good for him. And why did the bank robber break into the kitchen? Because he heard they had a bread making machine. Ooh, yes. All right, enough of that, jokesters. Back to our sewing. All right, so now we've got our little arms. Let's just pretend he's all sewn up. <laughs> now we have our open part right here. So now we're going to just turn under the quarter inch that we've been using, or if it's now three eighths of an inch because we want to get over that stuff. We just turn it under, iron it flat like that and then I just ran a matching stitch of thread starting right at the corner where we left off just right across here boop. and you'll see that now all of a sudden there are no raw seams on this apron either there's no raw seams the whole thing is turned inside the band so let's take a look at this one so what I did at the end close up was just to stitch starting here had that old thing folded under and just stitched right down along those lines I made it 3 eighths of an inch which was a little bit wider than my gathering stitches so I didn't have to take them out um, gathered it all in and then now when you look on the back side there is no raw edge there's no raw edges anywhere except for the side and you know if you didn't like that you could always turn this under a quarter inch then sew it down and there's our cute little half and half apron so it's kind of like a burrito pillowcase you roll it up and do it it's awesome hi mama jay how you doing anyways i hope you like aprons you might just get one anyway so that's how you make a half and half apron and if you have any questions about making it or want to, you know, pick up the pattern or some fabric or whatever or ask questions, I can help you. So can all of our wonderful people on the floor. They are just awesome for helping out and doing things like that. All right. I got one more joke for you. The pièce de résistance. The final one. The one. It says, what did the pasta say to the other pasta? 